University Club. This has been the Agnes Perrin Auto Show presented by the University Club, driven by number one Cochran on the Pitt Sports Network from IMG College. The Pitt Panthers were without leading scorer Ashton Gibbs for a difficult two-game road trip to West Virginia and Villanova. With important wins over both, they return home where losing rarely happens. Tonight, it's the Bulls of USF visiting the Peterson Center. It's next on ESPN3.com. Event Center on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. Number four Panthers taking on the Bulls of the University of South Florida. After 12 games the regular season, you look at the standings, the Panthers, their best record ever, 11-1. USF a year ago won nine games in conference play. New team, new year. They have only two victories so far. Along with former Pitt great Curtis Aiken, I'm John Sanders. Welcome aboard for Big East Basketball tonight on ESPN3.com. And with Gibbs out of the lineup, they still won those two road games, so somebody had to step up. Well, well that's been the story of the Pitt Panthers all year. When someone needs to step up, they've always got the, the great play from their leaders on this team. And as you talk about Wanamaker, obviously Ashton Gibbs is out, but Gilbert Brown is the guy that's been stepping up for this team as well. And Gibbs will not play again tonight, but let's talk about two guys who will play. Our Star Watch features Gilchrist and Wanamaker. With a name like Augustus Gilchrist, you have to have game, and this kid does. Averaging 11 points, nine rebounds a game, solid overall player, very fluid in the interior. You talk about Wanamaker, he's the guy that does it all for the Pitt Panthers, all the intangibles. You see the obvious stats, 12 points, four assists a game, but here's, here's a kid that does all the little things that don't show up on the stat sheet. Despite that 6'10 size, Gilchrist is not in the starting lineup for the Bulls. Robertson, Crater, Poland, Anderson Jr., and Fitzpatrick are the starting five. For the Pitt Panthers, of course, one change with Gibbs out. That means Trevon Woodall takes over along with Wanamaker, Brown, Robinson, and McGee. Head coach Stan Heath in his fourth season had a great year last year, took his team to the NIT. A lot of new faces, especially missing Dominique Jones, Chris Howard. They're gone, so it's a different year for him. He is working his way back up in the Big East. There's Jamie Dixon, well on his way to having the most wins in the history of NCAA Division I coaching after eight years than anybody else. Well, it was unbelievable, and, and as I looked at the stat sheet earlier, the, the fourth fastest coach to get to that winning percentage and the number of wins in the history of the game as well. And he, as you mentioned, only coached eight years as a head coach. Unbelievable job that he's done. Bob Donato has been out for five weeks with some Achilles problems. He'll be one of the referees. And there is Ashton Gibbs. He came out, warmed up, went through his usual routine, and then put on his best duds and he's gonna well, sit down. Well, I was only gonna say a very dapper Ashton Gibbs, I might add. The opening tip controlled by the Pitt Panthers. You mentioned Donato, one of the referees tonight, had an Achilles problem. First game for him back after five weeks. Earl Walton and Bill McCarthy are the other two referees. Panthers' first possession. They'll work it outside. Wanamaker. Gets it back from Brown. Shot clock at 10. 
three-pointer on the way, bending, bending off. And it's the Bulls who control. Good rebound there, nice block out, but just as I expected, they don't think that they can really be as disciplined as they, uh, they want to be defensively, so they're going to work the shot clock. Quick jumper from the side by Anderson Jr. is no good. Ron's dad played professionally in the NBA and also overseas. Neither team has scored in the first minute, and we've got a foul against the Panthers. It'll go on Nasir Robinson, who has played well in the last few games. He's been averaging 15 points a game. He's one of the guys who stepped up in the absence of Gibbs. However, in Gibbs' absence, the Panthers in the last two games are two for 16 shooting three-pointers. Well, there's no, there's no question that with Ashton Gibbs down, you don't have that excellent sharp shooter from the perimeter, but they find other ways to contribute it. As you mentioned, Robinson does a great job for this team. Good move by Crater, sets up a three-point, and that one is buried by Hugh Robertson. Well, Robertson, one of the junior college transfers, hits the first three, and it's the Bulls from the University of South Florida in Tampa breaking on top against number four, Pittsburgh. They do expect, the Panthers do, that Gibbs will be back for their trip to Madison Square Garden this weekend to take on St. John's. Inside McGee, his first touch, up and in, foul. That'll go on Anderson, Jr. And with a smaller lineup, you can probably expect to see a lot of that. Yeah, I, I, I would think they would be going inside early and often. And I think, you know, one of the things that's important is that they're just patient. The Panthers feel like they can really get whatever they want if they're just patient on offense, as you saw there. Excellent job inside by McGee. Well, it's not that the Bulls haven't been close in some of these games because they have, Curtis. The problem is that when they get close, he said they haven't been able to finish. Yeah, they've been turning the basketball over with regularity down the stretch, and that's that, that doesn't usually lead to a win when you turn the basketball over at the end of the game. One point lead for the Bulls. Poland has it taken away. Wanamaker back the other way. And he's fouled from behind by Poland. Intentional foul is called. Well, that's an automatic intentional when you're ahead of the, the pack. Well, let's take it back and look at it from the steal. Well, they, this is a great lead into what we were talking about. The, you know, them turning the, the Bulls turning the basketball over. Wanamaker did a great job of getting in the lane and deflecting that pass. Now has an opportunity for two and the ball out. You know, even with Gibbs on the court, which normally, obviously, he is, most of the offense still runs through number 22. Yeah, it, it really does. And one of the reasons for that, John, is that they do a great job, all teams, of keying on Aston Gibbs. And that's when Wanamaker goes to work, and they have to start to respect Wanamaker and not double-team Gibbs. Two at the line for Brad Wanamaker the senior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. What strides he has made as a player from when he was a freshman? Well, huh? it, it's certainly been a treat watching this kid develop and blossom into the player that he has. Every year he's gotten better and improved in different aspects of his game and, you know, has really turned into the complete player, John. Brown from the corner. Drills a two. talking about improving aspects of your game. That's, just, that's something that Brown couldn't do a year ago, knock down that three-point shot. Panthers had their first three-point lead of the night. Just over two minutes gone here in the opening half from the Peterson Event Center. Fitzpatrick down low. Baseline jumper goes. Nice turnaround by Fitzpatrick. I thought, you know, he did a good job of creating space for himself. Nice fadeaway for the, for the big guy. Panthers had scored six in a row until that basket. Here's Wanamaker. Down the lane he comes and lays it home. But you got to cut him off, don't you? <laughs> well, easier said than done, John. But if, you know, your point is well taken. If he starts to penetrate, you're really in trouble because he, he clicks on all cylinders at that point. Panthers come out to a straight up man to man, as they always do, John. Pick you up at half court. The foul will go on Wanamaker. He's got that quick speed, and he does like to drive. He's more of a driver, I think, Curtis, than a three-point shooter. Absolutely. Just look how explosive he is on that, and just, you know, the strength to get the ball to the rim as, as he did. It makes it look so easy, John. Three, two, three. Bulls have the basketball. Just over three minutes played here in the opening half. It's a three-point lead for the Pitt Packers. Anderson Jr., who started his collegiate career at Kansas State on a drive, and that's an offensive foul. 
So that'll be two already on Ron Anderson Jr. Well, that's a tough break there, man. He did a great job of splitting the defender, and I thought he did a good job also controlling his body in the air. Don't know if that was an offensive foul. Bad break for the Bulls. Gives the Panthers back to basketball. Pittsburgh, of course, we mentioned almost unbeatable in this building. You're 146 and 12. They did lose one home game. There's a nice steal. And all alone to the other end with the jam is Robertson. He can elevate. Cuts the Panther lead to one. some credit to Trayvon Woodall. Nice speed there by Woodall to set up Robinson. That's the way he's played since taking over for Gibbs. Yeah, he's really he's done a great job. And I think, you know, the area that he improved, John, is that he would always come into the game early in his career looking to score. Now he comes in the game looking to get other people involved. And guess what? When you do that, you wind up scoring anyway. Jared Famous from outside nails a two-pointer. The 6'11 senior out of Westchester Junior College and the Bronx cuts it back to a one point lead. And so right now the Bulls got to be pleased they're hanging in there. They have to be. And I think they've done a good job of executing their offense on, uh, on offense, obviously, and, and really taking good shots. They haven't forced anything thus far. Rebound tipped out, controlled by Robertson. Three on two for USF. Crater from the side, that's a three. <laughs> Jamie Dixon isn't going to let that go on very long. I mean, it, they've gotten really three or four uncontested shots and uh, look for Jamie to call a timeout if that happens again. There's a nice three-pointer off the fast break that time, and it's a two-point lead for USF. Robinson, no place to go. Both teams have spread the wealth. We've had nine different guys score points. Robinson gets inside, and he creates an offensive foul, so he'll pick up number two. So like Ron Anderson, Jr., it's an important player with two quick fouls. 14.58 to go in the half. Right now, it's a two-point lead for USF. The dunk here, and the Bulls are playing well. Pitt's social network on Twitter. Follow the football, men's basketball, and women's basketball teams to receive breaking news, behind-the-scenes photos, insider information, and more. Follow the football team at Go Pitt Football, the men's basketball team at Hail to Pitt Hoops, and the women's basketball team at Pitt Women's Hoops on Twitter.com or on your mobile phone. When you start with a strong foundation... When you rise to meet complex challenges. When you realize the potential impact. And when you bring new ideas to life, anything is possible. Hail to Pitt. Panthers four of six, the Bulls are five of six so far in the early going, and USF has the lead here in the Peterson Event Center. And look at the close games, Curtis, that they've been involved in. We talked about that briefly about Stan Heath, who said today they get there, but they got to finish. Yeah, and, and that's been the Achilles heel, and that's the turnovers for this basketball team. You know, I talked to the coaching staff as well before the game. How do you keep, how do you keep these guys motivated? I mean, some very tough losses. Obviously, their record is not a very good record. And one of the things that they said is that we're in every game, and that, that in itself is enough to keep these guys motivated. And the Panthers, who's got the ball? <laughs> it's going to be the University of South Florida Who wants with the, the basketball. Ball? <laughs> I thought they were just going to stand there and let the referee <laughs> throw it in himself. 12-10, USF on top. Keep in mind, the Bulls defeated the Panthers, who are ranked 17th in the nation last year, down in Tampa. 
Of course, they were led by a terrific game by Jones, who turned out to be a number one pick in the NBA at 37 points to light up the Panthers. Trader a miss, loose ball. Woodall dives for it, and the Panthers had it and then lost it. And let's see if we've got a foul called on Looks Burrell. Like, like a double foul. Okay. okay. It's going to go on Seacrest, though. Gilchrist picks up his first as he's in the lineup for the first time. We look at Trey Woodall. He did a great job of getting on the floor, but I've been at practices that Jamie Dixon has and know the drills that they do, just diving on the floor. And uh, it certainly paid dividends there. Patterson is in the lineup for Pittsburgh. So is Zana, whose minutes have really gone down since Robinson came back. That's knocked out of bounds. Touch last by Robertson. So the Bulls will keep it. Or excuse me, the Panthers will keep it under their own basket with 14-14 to play. Of course, that diving business, Curtis, they wear a few more pads than you used to wear yeah, when you played here. Absolutely. <laughs> Does that mean we were tougher? Uh, I don't know. Let, let's say, let's go with that. That <laughs> means you had some floor burns probably when you played. Patterson no, no gets question. inside. Zana from the corner, bending off in a rebound battle underneath. Touched glass by the University of South Florida. You, you, you talk about South Florida, John. It's one of the things they have to do is keep the Panthers off the boards. If they continue to let the Panthers get second and third chance opportunities at the basket, obviously this is going to be a long night for them. Off the inbound play. That one comes up short. Crater had it, lost it. It goes out of bounds. Touch last by the Pitt Panthers. Still 12-10. USF on top here at the Peterson Event Center. The Oakland, Zoo, Oakland Zoo doesn't agree with that call, John. No, I know it. The two wins for the Bulls came against Providence College and DePaul, both at home. They are 0-6 on the road. Pittsburgh, meantime, is 6-0 and on the road. That's unbelievable. It really is, especially in the conference that they consider to be the best conference in the country. To do that is just outstanding. Gilchrist hands it off to Robertson. Robertson on a drive off the glass and good. Nice move. Very explosive move and had the, the ability to control his body in the air. Nice kiss off the glass by Robertson. Four-point lead, the biggest of the first half for USF. And from the Panthers, the only team in the power conferences is the Panthers turn it over and give it back to them, who are undefeated on the road. We're, that includes people like Ohio State, Kansas, uh, Texas, great teams, but they're the only one in a power conference who's undefeated. Wow, if, if you think about the things that Jamie Dixon has been able to accomplish over the last couple of years, and that being one, at this stage of the game, to be undefeated in a conference is just incredible. Panthers, though, have gone three minutes without scoring. They trail by four. Famous, with those famous shoes on. <laughs> Jump down. Panthers got a piece of it. And thrown right into the hands of Woodall. I think it was deflected. Three on two. Pittsburgh, feed to Zana, and he'll jam it home. And that's how you finish it. When you, when the Panthers have the numbers in terms of a, the advantage on a fast break situation, they usually come up with a bucket 90% of the time. Mike Burwell is on with Carter, who has it right now. Gets it to Poland. No place to go on that side, so he brings it back in front. 12 minutes and 15 seconds left in the half. Nice speed for three, and that goes nowhere, out of bounds. Belongs to Pittsburgh. Well, the Panthers went three and a half minutes between field goals, and still, Curtis, are only down by two points. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, obviously, you know, they're, they're letting this team hang around, and it's one of the things you don't want to do as a good team. If you're better than the team, you want to put it on them, put it on them early, get them out of the ball game. The more they hang around, particularly with the three-point shot, John, anything can happen. Noriega, who had six three-pointers in that loss to Notre Dame, of course, the Panthers trying to open up a two-game lead over Notre Dame in the Big East. They've lost just once. The Irish have lost three. Notre Dame will be playing at West Virginia this weekend. And the Panthers will play St. John's in the Garden, where they have been giant killers. They really have. And, uh, you know, it's going to be an interesting game this year. I think St. John's certainly have the personnel to compete on any level. They're you know, playing with those 10 seniors. Tie ball game now after the drive in the first basket of the night for Trayvon Woodall. Inside famous turns and shoots too strong. 
Woodall. Panthers with numbers, four on three, and Woodall will try to set it up outside. Quick dump down to Zana goes out, or excuse me, to Taylor goes out of bounds. So Taylor's in the lineup. That'll take us to a timeout. 11 minutes, 23 seconds remaining. Number four, Pitt, 14, USF, 14. Three Rhodes Scholars in the past five years. Hail to knowledge. Top five ranking in biomedical research. Hail to discovery. One of America's strongest public research universities. Hail to excellence. Home to happy students. Hail to Pitt. PittsburghPanthers.com is the official online home of Pitt Athletics and your source for news, photos, videos, stats, game day info, and more. Purchase tickets and merchandise or sign up for Panthers e-news and the Pitt Mobile Network all online at PittsburghPanthers.com. Also, visit GoPitFootball.com for an interactive look at the past and present of the Pitt football program. Fourteen, fourteen, with 11.23 to play here in the half, along with Curtis Aiken. I'm John Sanders on ESPN3.com. Let's take a closer look, Curtis, at those standings. The key, of course, is to get on the left-hand side. You want to be in the top eight so you can get a bye in New York City. Yeah, you want to get a bye, and, you know, if you look at the top ten, I think they can make a legitimate case for the top ten being in, a, in, in an NCAA tournament. But uh, you're right, you want to be on the left side of this bracket here and uh, guarantee the bye which is not going to happen for USF after going 9-9 nine and nine last year. Speaking of teams in the NCAA tournament, Joe Lenardi, who's our bracketologist at ESPN, says 11 Big East teams will make the tournament. We'll Seven. see. I believe that'll be the first, right? Yep. Trader with it now. Bulls and the Panthers tied at 14. Almost nine minutes gone in the opening half. Gilchrist. Against Donna, spins, shoots off the mark. And on the rebound, a foul is going to go on Taylor, I believe. Yeah, the foul's on Taylor, and I think uh, Gilchrist was a little off balance on that shot. Did a good job of getting position. But I tell you what, the same holds true for the Pitt Panthers. If they're going to continue to let the Bulls get second and third chance opportunities, it could be a long night for them as well, John. A famous was fouled, and then an offensive foul on Pittsburgh on the drive, but not able to finish that time was Fitzpatrick. It goes against J.J. Moore. And that's how deep he can go into this bench, Curtis. He'll go 10 deep, will Jamie Dixon, a lot. Yeah, he, he will, and uh, you haven't heard that name for some time, J.J. Moore, but I tell you what, when you talk about talent level, as you mentioned, John, it doesn't drop off very far. That's how they can go into West Virginia and Villanova, both tough places to play, the Pavilion and also the Coliseum, and come away with two wins. And most teams would be happy to go in those arenas and come away just having a game close. That's long. right. Not easy to play in either place. Susanna outside. Playing some minutes here with Robinson in early foul trouble. He had two quick ones. This is Patterson outside. But John, that's always been a Jamie Dixon rule. If you pick up two in the first half, you typically don't play again until the second. Crater picks up his first foul. Five fouls apiece on the team side with 10.38 to play in the half, and Woodall gets his first blow. What a game changer. Just checked into the game. Wanamaker. And also coming back, another one of the Panther starters, Gilbert Brown, number five. There he is. Let's just check the tempo of the game now that Wanamaker has checked in. Just He just makes things happen, and, and guys just play at a different level when he's in. He has the ball right now, gives it up to Zana. Looking inside now to Patterson. Back to Wanamaker, to Zana again. And Brown thought about three. Panthers, as I mentioned, two for 16, shooting three-pointers with Gibbs not in the lineup. Shot clock inside 10. Oh, nice speed to Taylor, but he can't finish. However, Zana does. Uh, 
Came out of nowhere, Curtis, and jammed it home. Well, he's uh, shown signs of brilliance in his early career here at, the, at Pitt, and uh, as you saw, flashes of brilliance there. You got an illegal screen. It's called on uh, number 24, so Gilchrist will pick up his second foul, and that's been a problem for Gilchrist. You, you talk about coming from the weak side. You can't come any stronger than that from the weak side as you see the big fella finish strong at the rim. Dante Taylor would call that a pass. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Curtis, you're going to give him an assist on that hey, play. Hey, I'll give it to him. Okay. Here's Brown outside. Panthers trying to go back on top. They've been up by as many as three. Bulls have led by four during this first half. Wanamaker gets it down to Zana, who's playing really well off the bench. Six points for him. Well, John, you and I both talked about it at the top of the show about how different guys come in and help lift this team and take it to the next level. Tonight, it looks like Zana's off to a great start. Well, remember, Robinson was out with injuries early in the season, and Zana was the starter, played a lot of minutes, but since Robinson has stepped up, his minutes have declined. Noriega on a drive and a finish. But to your point, John, tonight, a great finish by uh, Novoaya, but uh, to your point tonight, John, uh, Robinson with two fouls, and here comes Zana. He has six early points to lead the scoring for his team. By the way, McGee is back on the court again for Pittsburgh. Zana tries to get inside, does, bending, bending, good. How about Zana? I thought he should have taken the first shot. He was all alone right yeah. at the foul line. Yeah, I, I agree, but, you know, when you can finish it like that, why not get a little closer? All together for both teams, 11 different players have scored. Famous banging against McGee banks at home. Nice move. I think LC Green will be will be proud of those shoes, yes, right? Yes, he would. Absolutely. I bet he doesn't know who LC Greenwood is. <laughs> Ask his parents. I'm sure they know. Well, absolutely. Wanamaker penetrates, hangs, bending, bending, no good. And Sean is there for the foul. How about Zana with 10? And the Panthers are up two. And he's playing with a great deal of energy and passion tonight, and uh, it's good to see him get off to a good start. Well, he's made five in a row to account for his 10 points. Famous outside the crater. Dumped down to Fitzpatrick. Working on Zana. Fade away baseline. Comes up short. Rebound Brown. Here's Wanamaker. Stop and go move to the left hand. And go. Wanamaker. A little hesitation move, Curtis, and he finished it nicely. Well, just had the presence of mind to get to the rack after seeing that they doubled down on Zana after Zana scored the last two buckets, and he finished really nice with the left hand. Panthers had their biggest lead of the half with 7.15 to play. They're up four. Gilchrist on a drive, reverses to Famous, and he's fouled. That'll be number one on Zana. And Wanamaker showing his driving ability to help the Panthers open up their biggest lead of the opening half. Wanamaker, there's the little stop, there's the go, and there's the finish. Start with a strong foundation. When you rise to meet complex challenges. When you realize the potential impact. And when you bring new ideas to life. Anything is possible. Hail to Pitt. on to PittsburghPanthers.com and visit men's and women's basketball game day centrals for complete basketball game day information. Basketball game day central is your home for ticket, parking, and traffic information, as well as broadcast details, post-game recaps, stats, and highlights. Your pre-game and post-game hub for pit basketball information is game day central at PittsburghPanthers.com.
located in the heart of Oakland overlooking the Cathedral of Learning, the University Club is the ideal location for your celebration. From elegant receptions to rehearsal dinners or bridal luncheons, the University Club offers a breathtaking venue and exceptional service for virtually any sized affair. Experience the masterful blend of historic elegance and modern amenities that make the University Club the classic Pittsburgh wedding location. Call 412-648-8213 or visit uc.pitt.edu for more information. Four point pit lead. Most of their damage coming inside and most of it being done by number 42, Talib Zion. Well, he's really giving it to him in a number of different ways. As you saw him go over the right shoulder and finish strong there with two hands. He's been the answer early for the Pitt Panthers. But don't leave this guy out because he's the money player for him. As you see Donna finish again, excited about what he's doing thus far. Team fouls are even at six apiece. And Donna, the only three points in the last six games, not very many minutes. And he gets 10 tonight. We still have not seen Robinson come back after those two early fouls. Bad pass, but Prater keeps it alive for the Bulls. USF down four. Anderson Jr. gets it to Prater. Off the screen by Famous. Robertson dumped down to Famous against McGee. And he lost it out of bounds. It slipped out of his hand. Six turnovers now by the University of South Florida. And as you mentioned, Curtis, that's the thing that has hurt them a lot this season. Well, that's the thing that runs the coaches to crazy the most. As you talk about it before the game, of protecting the basketball, coming to meet the pass, and, and uh, it somehow gets away from you. Well, they're on the minus side by five turnovers a game this year. A reach-in foul will be called against Poland. He'll pick up his second. Jawan's of Poland. Out of Hutchinson Junior College and Crowley College, which is a junior college. Interesting story there. He was at Crowley College as a freshman. His coach moved to Hutchinson Juco. He wanted to go with him. They wouldn't release him, so he went to Hutchinson Juco anyway and didn't play last year. Wow. Well, he's doing an excellent job here uh, for the Bulls. Averaging 10 points a game has really been the number two guy in terms of offensively and, and, and helping this team get to you know, uh, uh, to a pretty decent uh, record. If, if that's ever going to happen, it's going to have to happen through Poland and uh, the big fella. Wanamaker hits a pair at the line. He's four for four. He has nine points now. Well, Robertson has been the answer offensively for the Bulls. He hasn't taken a shot the last few minutes. Uh, we talked about the greatness of Dominique Jones, who had 37 against the Panthers last year. Going to the NBA as a number one pick. Nice rebound pulled down that time by J.J. Richardson. The Bulls are coming out playing a straight up man to man. And that's where they run into trouble. Second basket for McGee. Now Zana and Wanamaker have 18 of the Panther points. The rest of the team has 10. And Pitt all of a sudden has loosened it up a little bit, leading by eight. Well, they loosened it up on the offensive end by spreading and getting the ball inside to the big, but they certainly tightened it up on the defensive end as you see them start to extend their defense. Robertson back to Noriega. Long three. He had a great night against Notre Dame with six three-pointers and a career-high 23 points, unfortunately, in a loss. It's 28 to 20. And McGee is so strong, Curtis, inside. Well, give Woodall credit. He called the right offense when they saw him in the man-to-man -man because you have no answer for McGee inside. Simply bumped the defender out of the way. Made it an eight-point lead. Wanamaker dancing down the lane, turns it over. And Woodall gets it back. Wanamaker. Oh, on the drive, it's Brown. The well, thing of beauty, that's what you like to see. Woodall started it with the great hustle, getting his, getting his hands and feet dirty on the ground, was able to find a slashing ground for an overhead dunk. Panthers has opened up a 10-point lead thanks to the fact that the Bulls have not scored in over three and a half minutes. From the foul line, you can't end the drought as Gilchrist misses, and the rebound goes to J.J. Richardson. Missed badly. 
Woodall on a drive, takes it all the way in. A floater won't go. And the rebound pulled out of there by Gilchrist. Now over four minutes since the Bulls have scored. Noriega goes inside and unable to handle the pass is Fitzpatrick. Seven turnovers now for USF. The Panthers have a double figure lead. Panthers almost turned it over in their last possession, and then they turned it into two points. <laughs> well, luckily, the great hustle by Woodall here was able to get it back to uh, Wanamaker, who hit Brown for a nice dunk. Four minutes to play in the half. Panthers one loss at home this year came to Notre Dame. Notre Dame played slow down basketball against them here at the Peterson Center and beat them. Which was unusual because Notre Dame had not played very good on the road until they got the win here. Well that was the second time in a row beating the Pitt Panthers and uh, not many teams can lay claim to that John. Fitzpatrick rebounds the miss by Wanamaker and Crater will come up. Now Burrell We've got a foul inside. That's going to go on Taylor. And that'll be number two on Dante. Put the Panthers over the limit with 3.26 to play first half. It's 30-20. The number four team in the country has the lead. Thank you. Because of you, many of us have received scholarships. Because of you, I have a scholarship and I plan on studying medicine. Thank you. Because of you, we have the latest in classroom technology. Because of you, I have a great place to work out. Thank you. Because of you, I received the chair to strengthen the study of the new Europe. Thank you. Because of you, we're able to perform groundbreaking work on ALS, Alzheimer's, Huntington's, and Parkinson's disease. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because of you, because of you we, have we have scholarships from pet clubs across the country. Thank you. Because of you, our campus is expanding. Because of you, I received while earning my degree. Because of you, we established the Simmons Center, a leading center in research and treatment of pulmonary fibrosis. Thank you. Because of you, I received a scholarship to study business. Thank you. Because of you, I received a scholarship to study secondary English education. Because of you, the School of Law is taking giant steps in training tomorrow's lawyers. Thank you. Because of you, I have a scholarship to study psychology and I get to study in this beautiful library. Because of you, I received a scholarship to study political science. Thank you. Located in the heart of Oakland, overlooking the Cathedral of Learning in minutes from downtown, restaurants and shopping, the University Club is the ideal location for your next meeting or conference. This newly renovated, state-of-the-art conference facility advances productivity while providing sophisticated ambiance. Experience the masterful blend of historic elegance and modern amenities that make the University Club the ideal Pittsburgh Conference location. Call 412-648-8213 or visit uc.pitt.edu for more information. Panthers have a 10-point lead, and the Big East well represented in the top 25 and in the top 10 as well. You look at the top four in that list, and Joe Lenardi, the bracketologist for ESPN, says those are the four teams that will have number one seats in the NCAA tournament. We'll see if that works out or not. Well, you know, if you defend Panthers, you hope that it does, but, I mean, if you look at this bracket, you say the Panthers are number four. You can make an argument that they should be higher than number four after beating Texas this year. Well, it also might change with Kansas losing to Kansas State this past week. Yes. This could be a little bit of a shuffle up there, but make no mistake about it. You look at that top ten, there's ten pretty good teams. Oh, no question. Across the board, I mean, you know, I like every team. I had an opportunity to see every team that's in that top ten, and all deservingly so, and, uh, it's going to be a fantastic NCAA tournament this year. And how's Jamie's team been doing? 240 weeks in the rankings. They're just perennial now. Gilchrist looking for his first point. Gets it. Jamie is certainly built a powerhouse in the dynasty here in Pittsburgh. Well, the Bulls able to slice into that double-digit lead. A pair for Augustus Gilchrist, the 65% shooter on the year coming in. 
So it goes to 30 to 22. And Woodall will take his time bringing it up. On with Zana, who's back out there. Brown, McGee, and Wanamaker. This is McGee working on Fitzpatrick. Powers his way inside. Sets up Brown for three, and he buries it. Well, it didn't look pretty. It was a line drive, but it found his way to the bottom of the net. It's much improved from a year ago. But that's one thing about Ashton Gibbs. The Panthers with their first three-point shot, and they've now matched the total of threes that they've made each in the last two <laughs> games. They made just one in each of those games. And that foul going to go against Brown. No, it's not. It's going to go the other way. It'll go on Hugh Robertson, so he will pick up his first. And Gibbs, his three-point shot is also kind of a line drive shot. He doesn't have a lot of arc on it like you used to do. Uh, no, it, not a lot of arc at all, but I'll tell you what, it finds the bottom of the rim as well. But how can we talk about Ashton Gibbs and not talk about that bow tie? <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> Well, he warned you before the game. He said, well, you see what I'm wearing tonight. He, he did, and uh, he showed up in class tonight. Susanna with 10 early points, gets it to Brown, but it's knocked away, and then a foul, I think, is going to go on Brown as he got on top of Burrell. So the Panthers pick up another team foul for Gilbert, his first. Gilbert Brown, a guy, Curtis, his main problem has been just getting healthy and getting out on the court. He's had all kinds of injury problems, cost him one full year. He's now a redshirt senior. Well, you know, it's been a long journey for this young man. And, uh, you know, if he continues to play the way that he has as of late, being very aggressive on the offensive end, we know he gives it to you on the defensive end every night. But offensively, uh, you know, there's been some questions about whether or not he's aggressive in the games. But this kid has all the intangibles, all the tools that it takes to play the next level. It'd be great to see him get it done. And Burrell. Hangs it up there for a while and then finally falls. Now that is not the way thousand point score Curtis Aiken did it here. He had net from the line, right? Well, the rooms were bigger back then. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I knew there was a reason. And that's the first miss at the foul line for the Bulls. Burrell gets into the scorebook, cuts it to a 10 point lead. This is Wanamaker. McGee sets up the ball screen. Woodall. No place to go. Good coverage inside by Famous. As he's matched up against that man, McGee, up with a right hand, comes up short off the glass, and the rebound to the University of South Florida, pulled out of there by Robertson. And they get it back to Crater, counting down to two minutes left in the opening half. Panthers by 10. They've been up by as many as 11. An early four-point lead for the Bulls. Kind of slowly and methodically, the Panthers have been pulling ahead. Famous with it. Bumps Brown. Bumps him again. Robertson, five on the shot clock. They're going to have to throw it up. And Robertson does just that. Shot clock violation. Nine turnovers now for the University of South Florida. Well, believe it or not, John, I believe that was by design. I think they tried to work the shot clock. However, when you work the shot clock, you have to do like Notre Dame did. You got to know what you're going to get into and go have a play in mind. But here, they, they just had no clue what they do with the basketball with five or six seconds on the shot clock. Poland set to check back in for the Bulls, who trail by 10 in the final minute and a half of the opening half. Here's Zana, who's been busy. Brown has it knocked away by Famous. McGee gets it back. And to the foul line goes Zana as he tried to work the baseline. Drew the foul. It'll be number one on Garland Fitzpatrick. Nine team fouls so far on USF. I was just going to make the point, John, that I think uh, the Bulls have done, have done a good job of making the adjustment. McGee has been hurting them early on in the paint. They're starting to double down now. McGee has to recognize that and distribute the basketball. Robertson will check out. Noriega back on. Zana looking for point number 12. And he's already close to a career high. Brown with the offensive rebound. His career best is 14 this year. And he has 11 so far tonight. Heading to the final minute. It's Wanamaker. Woodall 
Set up by the screen by Zana, rattles home a two. Second field goal tonight for Trayvon Woodall. And the Panthers stretch it out to 13 now. 54 seconds remain in the half, and you look up at the scoreboard and you say, okay, Pitt's up by 13. But it was kind of a quiet move to a 13-point lead, don't you think? It, it really was, and, and the Bulls got off to a good start. They started hit, they hit their outside shots, did a good job of getting the ball inside. Robinson had you know, seven points early on, but the Panthers just started to push that defense out and extending that defense has really caused some problems for the Bulls. Now, Jamie Dixon's club in great shape as far as the postseason is concerned. They've lost just twice. Both games here in Pittsburgh, not at this building, however. They lost to Tennessee in the new console center at 11 and one start the best they've ever had in the Big East and that number we talked about on the road five and two against top 25 teams 10 straight 20 win seasons and you don't want to play them in this building no you really don't and you look at those statistics there I'll just take any one of those lines and be happy with it do you think Jamie Dixon is intense during a game? He's just as intense in practice. He really is, and it's fun to watch him. I think every high school coach should bring their team to a Pitt Panther practice and watch how these guys compete. And you talk about, as Allen Ivins would say, it's just practice. They take it a lot different. Well, at halftime, we will go inside with a look. That's a three by Noriega, and he can shoot him very well. Gets his first tonight. He's a 35% shooter. And they granted ESPN all access to their team, their practice, and I think you'll enjoy it. It's coming up at halftime. Looking forward to it. It was a full day, I guarantee you that. Final seconds, opening half. Woodall looks for Patterson. Gets into the lane, spins, tried to give it back to Brown, and he kicks it out of bounds with 4.9 to go. The Panthers have turned it over six times. I believe Jamie Dixon's calling the timeout with 4.9 seconds to go. You think Patterson's going to get an ear for or what? <laughs> <laughs> this timeout is solely dedicated to Mr. Patterson. <laughs> well, you take that 30-second timeout there or you lose it. So, yeah. With a 10-point lead, the Panthers will take the timeout. They're being led by Wanamaker with eight, Zana with 11. Those have been the two leading scorers. Gilbert Brown also chipping in with seven. And again, Curtis, it's balanced by the Pitt Panthers. Yeah, and that, that's been the, uh, the thing that's made this team so successful. They have balance across the board. And, and uh, as you see, you know, your great point that, you know, if you don't use that timeout, you lose it. Why not use that timeout to teach, as you saw Jamie Dixon there? This is the middle part of a three-game stretch for Stan Heath's club against top 10 teams because it started with Notre Dame. They lost there playing Pitt tonight, and then they've got Georgetown. Noriega's three at the buzzer goes. Yes. Told you that guy could shoot some threes. He's now got eight points, and he slices the seed to the lead to 36-29. So Noriega off the bench with a couple of three-pointers. You talk about arc. <laughs> that one was in the air for a while, wasn't it? That was a rainbow. And, you know, the, you know Jamie Dixon obviously wasn't happy with that. You know, uh, he spent his time out talking about what happened on the offensive end. Perhaps those guys forgot to do what, to do what they're supposed to do on the defensive end. Uh, you know, you talk about in practice, these guys know who the shooters are. They never found him on that particular play in the cost him. USF finishes on a 6-0 run to get back to a 36-29 deficit. Halftime is coming up. About 40% of Americans are nearsighted, and LASIK is an incredible procedure that can change your life. We use lasers to sculpt the cornea, and you're able to have better vision without the use of glasses or contact lenses. Imagine waking up in the morning and seeing the alarm clock. Imagine swimming without glasses or contact lenses. Imagine going to the beach and being able to find your beach towel and go into the ocean without worrying about glasses or contact lenses. When you're choosing a place to have LASIK, there are a few important points to consider. 
One is to make sure that your eye surgeon is involved with your care from beginning to end. That means the eye surgeon should be there for the preoperative evaluation to make sure you're a good candidate for LASIK. Of course, the surgeon's going to be doing the surgery, but then it's wonderful if the surgeon is there to do all the postoperative care as well. We are committed to excellence. For us, LASIK is the practice of medicine. It's not just doing another procedure. We want to ensure that each patient gets personalized care and the best outcome possible. UPMC Eye Center is a leader in the field of LASIK. We were one of the first clinical sites to be involved with the FDA trials that actually got LASIK approved. Also, we are educators as well, so we train other physicians how to do LASIK both nationally and internationally. We have a phenomenal team of nurses that work with us to make sure that each person gets the best quality care possible in a very personalized approach. It's important to go to a facility that has been doing LASIK for a long time and is committed to excellence. The UPMC Eye Center has the longest running LASIK program in the city and it's over 15 years of experience. If you're interested in having a consultation at the UPMC Eye Center for LASIK, please call our office and set up a free consultation. Pittsburgh had a 13-point lead, but a nice finish to the half by USF. We've cut that down to seven by scoring the last six. Welcome back to the Peterson Event Center, along with former Panther great Curtis Aiken. I'm John Sanders. What do you think after the first 20? Well, I don't think Jamie Dixon was happy with that last defensive uh, of, uh, uh, possession that they had there. But however, I thought the Panthers really controlled the ball game, did an excellent job of getting the ball inside to their bigs early on. Uh, obviously, Wanamaker was the playmaker that he's been this year. But on the other hand, I thought the Bulls did a pretty good job as well. I mean, it got a little cold. I thought they should have went to Robinson a little bit more, who got seven early points, had it going on a little bit. They got away from that. Uh, I think the second half, obviously, they got to try to open it up a little more and try to create some isos in, in terms of one-on-one -on -one situations. And we'll see how they can handle McGee and the Pittsburgh big men inside because the Panthers did some damage in the paint in that first half. Yeah, they did some damage. And you talk about McGee, but Zana contributed to that as well. I mean, he was able to go over his right and left shoulder and get to the rim and finish, as you saw, a couple uh, slam dunks. He's very active, and that's one guy they have to key on the second half. He was the key to a Pitt Panther lead that grew to as many as 13. It's seven at halftime here in the Peterson Event Center. Back with more on ESPN3.com. Hi, I'm Agnes Farinato, head coach of the Panthers. And I'm Shayla Scott. And on behalf of the entire Pitt basketball team, we'd like to invite you to our annual Pink to Peterson game on Saturday, February 19th, when we play West Virginia. One dollar from every ticket sold goes to the Pittsburgh affiliate of Susan G. Komen for the Cure. And you can save five dollars on your Race for the Cure registration if you sign up at the game. Together, on Saturday, February 19th, we can make a difference. The Bulls will have it to start the second half, and Noriega getting the start in the second half. Well, deservedly so. He's done a good job of shooting the ball from the perimeter at eight points the first half. Panthers going with their original starting lineup, meaning Robinson, who sat most of the half with two fouls, is back on. There's Noriega, another three, bending off from the rebound, pulled down by Robinson. Well, that's what he does so well, is get into the interior and go after that basketball. Here comes Wanamaker into the lane, bending, bending off. McGee with an offensive board. Keeps it alive, shoots and rolls it off. able to squeeze that when he gets real small when he brings the ball down but he was able to get it back up and finish but that's not what you want your big guy to do is it to bring it down like that no, not at all and if you do do, do bring it down you got to make sure you squeeze it and hold it tight like he did McGee out the hedge a bit defensively and Noriega has it again gets it to Fitzpatrick hands to Crater And there again is a hedge by McGee. Crater gets inside and throws up a prayer. And that's what he did. He didn't shoot that. He threw that <laughs> up, but it went in. <laughs> it did. I don't know how, Curtis. 
I think he opened up his eyes and realized that the scoreboard changed and he was happy about it. 38-31 with 18-30 remaining in the game. Pittsburgh looking ahead to a game at Madison Square Garden this weekend against the St. John's Red Storm. Well, that's going to be a good, good game, John. You mentioned that earlier. You talk about a kid, local kid, DJ Kennedy, who's one of the seniors that you talked about, doing a great job this year for the Redmen. Famous gets inside a mismatch that time against Woodall, and he's able to finish. So now the lead is down to five. Then as many as 13, it was seven at halftime. Wanamaker to Robinson. Spins. Has it blocked. Good job that time by Fitzpatrick to get a piece. Panther fans getting a little impatient now. They are, and uh, you know, you got to give the Bulls credit. They're executing their offense, looking for the right opportunity. No place for Noriega to go. 17 21 to go in the game. Crater, Robertson inside the arc as the shot clock was winding down. Easy rebound for Robinson. Woodall to Wanamaker. Tried to go alley oop to Brown coming in from the weak side, and the Panthers turn it over for the 10th time. When you talk about the game-changing ability, that's one of those plays that could certainly change the complexity of the game if that goes down. Well, maybe a bit too much of a crowd as he attempted that alley-oop. Famous gets inside, left-hand finish. Well, I agree, John, but at this point, the Panthers need some sort of spark to get into this ball game. It came out very flat second half and the Panthers are going to take a quick timeout which will take us to a break with 1647 to play right now number four pitch lead is down to three on ESPN3.com season at the Panthers team store located in the lobby of the Peterson Event Center or the online store at PittsburghPanthers.com. Purchase new Nike sideline apparel, personalized jerseys, and more. The Panthers team store is open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6, and Saturdays from 11 to 6. Panther fans, join the Panther Club and contribute to the athletic scholarship fund that directly supports the annual athletic and academic development of Pitt student athletes. Call the Panther Club at 412-648-8889. When you start with a strong foundation. When you rise to meet complex challenges. When you realize the potential impact. And when you bring new ideas to life. Anything is possible. Hail to Pitt. Log on to PittsburghPanthers.com and visit men's and women's basketball game day centrals for complete basketball game day information. Basketball game day central is your home for ticket, parking, and traffic information, as well as broadcast details, post-game recaps, stats, and highlights. Your pre-game and post-game hub for pit basketball information is game day central at PittsburghPanthers.com. USF into the half on a 6-0 run. They've got a 6-0 run going right now, and thus the lead is down to three, and they've been doing some good work on the interior. Right, in large part because of the interior. I think they've done a good job of finding guys in mismatch situations in the interior. As you see, Woodall caught on the island against one of the big guys, and uh, I think right now at this point they realize that Butter is getting the ball to the basket, done an excellent job thus far getting the ball inside. So a good job off the bench that time by Jared Famous. He's got eight points on the night. Panthers lead is down three. And they'll have the basketball as we return to action here at the Peterson Event Center on ESPN3.com, along with Curtis Aiken and our entire 
ESPN crew. I'm John Sander. Glad to have you along. Certainly, I think at this point, the Bulls have made this game more interesting than maybe some people expected. Well, as you mentioned earlier, John, the zoo is one of those people that didn't expect it to be this close, so look for them to get involved to try to give the Panthers a little boost. Woodall. Brown gets it to McGee. Now they reverse it. Wanamaker and Woodall. Shot clock at 15. Still time. Well, the Bulls have done a good job of switching up their off. I mean, their defense, I should say, now in the 2-3 zone. Brown short along the baseline. Tip try no good. Brown gets it back. That one bends off. McGee, a tip no good. Another tip on the weak side, no good. And finally, USF comes out of there with it. Boy, they had about four cracks at it. They did, and, uh, you know, I, I like what they're doing right now. They've switched up the defense a little bit and forced the Panthers, although they got four shots at the basket, they forced them into four tough shots. USF with the basketball. This is Crater, picked up by Woodall. Now Fitzpatrick. Robinson on him. Shot clock inside 10. Fitzpatrick from the foul line. Comes up short. Brown picks up the loose ball. 15 and a half to go here in Pittsburgh. And that time, Trayvon Woodall simply lost the handle, but the Panthers managed to keep it. Here's Robinson. Brown from outside, way too strong. Yeah, just didn't, in between whether do I shoot this ball or do I pass it, he's already committed in the air, so he let it go and it wasn't pretty. Yeah, I don't think, you're right, I don't think he knew what he wanted to do at all with that ball. Noriega for three. That's a little too strong, and Wanamaker handles the rebound. Remember, Wanamaker averages five rebounds a game and five assists a game, so he's a do-everything type player. Wanamaker, Brown, back to Wanamaker. Shot clock again at 15. Robinson against Gilchrist. Has it blocked and a foul called on Gilchrist. Well, John, I, I don't mean to insinuate the obvious here, but this is the time where Ashley Gibbs is so critical to this team. When they, at times, they struggle manufacturing points, and Ashley Gibbs is instant offense, as we know. Gilchrist picks up his third foul. It's 38-35, hit. social network on Twitter. Follow the football, men's basketball, and women's basketball teams to receive breaking news, behind-the-scenes photos, insider information, and more. Follow the football team at Go Pit Football, the men's basketball team at Hail to Pit Hoops, and the women's basketball team at Pit Women's Hoops on Twitter.com or on your mobile phone. When you start with a strong foundation, When you rise to meet complex challenges. When you realize the potential impact. And when you bring new ideas to life, anything is possible. Hail to Pitt. It is a three point difference in the game, but some foul trouble beginning to mount for the Bulls of USF. Well, in particular, Gilchrist is a guy that, you know, is not doing much offensively today, but his presence alone on a defensive end can cause havoc. And uh, he picks up his third foul there, so they won't be having him for the next few minutes. Well, they will stay with him despite his third foul. So I guess this Gilchrist will stay on the court with three. And I think when you're Coach Heath and you have tried to figure out a way to win, you have to do things like that, don't you? 
Yeah, well, you know, I, I certainly can't blame him. I mean, he's the leading scorer on this team, although he didn't start today. Uh, you know, his presence alone, as I mentioned, has certainly helped this team in, in terms of interior defense. And uh, right now, they're only down by four points against number four team in the country. So you got to go with what's been working for you. Ron Anderson Jr. back on the court for the Bulls. Hands to Poland. And nice move down the lane that time. Beautiful move down the lane, but the Panthers on the ball defense has been really bad the second half. Well, that is nine for Hugh Robertson to make it a two-point game. Remember right toward the end of the first half, it was a 13-point lead for Pitt, and the Panthers almost turned it over again. Well, the Bulls were in a, a uh, looks like a 2-3 zone, but they're almost coming up playing a 1-2-2, two, two, falling back to a 3-3 three, three zone. Very active in the passing lane. Very long team doing a good job right now with this 2-3 zone. Good feed inside and a nice finish that time by Robinson. Give him five points. Panthers back up by four. 13.30 to go. It's 41-37. Number four team in the country in Big East play. Getting a pretty good test tonight from the Bulls of the University of South Florida. Of course, this is the Big East, Curtis, and you never know. Poland from outside, off the mark, and the rebound by Robinson. Gets it to Woodall, then Wanamaker. Well, I think your point was going to be, John, that <laughs> every night's a tough test. Now, Poland picks up his third foul. Zana will check back in. And the Panthers went five minutes and 49 seconds, Curtis, between field goals. Well, one of the reasons is that guy over there sitting in the on the sideline and the bow tie has a little bit to do with that. He's the guy that usually steps up when the Panthers struggle offensively and comes up all the time with the big basket. 13 minutes to play here at the Peterson Event Center. Almost thrown away. Taylor tried to save it and does. Nope. It's going to go the other way. They better get used to this zone and even a matchup zone because that's what they're going to see this weekend from St. John's. Yeah, that, that's a good point. But that's one of the things that Robertson gives you that Zana doesn't. I mean, Robertson is so effective when he catches the ball in the middle. I mean, he's very creative. He can pass the basketball, can get to the rim with either hand. Zana doesn't possess those skills, at least right now. So Patterson is on. Taylor, Zana, and, of course, Woodall and Wanamaker. So a change inside for the University of Pittsburgh. Playing on their home building here on the campus. Gilchrist from outside. Tried to step down the lane. Nice spin move and draws the foul. The basket is good. The foul goes on Taylor. He'll pick up his third. And Gilchrist didn't start, Curtis, but he's played pretty well off the bench. He really has. And Gilchrist, here you are at 6'10 and 245 pounds. Very agile for a big fella. Cuts the lead to two, a chance to get it to one. He has made two of two at the line. You mentioned he missed a week with the team in December. Had some differences with his coach. Levante Doherty is going to check in now for the Bulls. He misses the three-point attempt. And Woodall comes back for Pittsburgh, leading by two. Zana. up from outside and buries it. It's a two. Nice shot curling off the screen. Nice body control and finish the jump shot. Back to a four-point Panther lead. Gilchrist on a drive gets it back to Anderson Jr. And now Noriega all alone inside Gilchrist and one. That's on McGee. And that's part of what we talked about. Curtis, the fact they've been able to do a good job against the Panthers inside has helped them climb right back in the ball game. Down by just two with a free throw to come here on ESPN3.com. Three Rhodes Scholars in the past five years. Hail to knowledge. Top five ranking in biomedical research. Hail to discovery. 
one of America's strongest public research universities. Hail to excellence. Home to happy students. Hail to Penn. PittsburghPanthers.com is the official online home of Pitt Athletics and your source for news, photos, videos, stats, game day info, and more. Purchase tickets and merchandise or sign up for Panthers e-news and the Pitt Mobile Network, all online at PittsburghPanthers.com. Also, visit GoPittFootball.com for an interactive look at the past and present of the Pitt football program. got a good one going in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania tonight. Number four Pitt leading by just two with 11.42 to go and a chance for Gilchrist to do some more damage at the line. Now the bench scoring has been strongly for USF. 23 points off their bench. Zana has been the Pittsburgh bench tonight with 11. Well, look, look for it. I'm certainly on the offensive end. Zana has been the answer for the Panthers, but Look for Brown and uh, Wanamaker, who's not in the game right now. I'm sure he'll be getting in shortly to pick up to start to pick up the slack on the offensive end. Gilchrist to cut it to one. Are you surprised the job they've been able to do inside against the Panthers here in this half? I, I really am. And, you know, Richardson started off the game slicing and dicing, and now they've got the big fella involved, and they got it, got, got it going both ways right now. Seven now for Gilchrist. 43-42, Panthers lead is one. They've been up by as many as 13. And USF has battled hard tonight. 11 and a half to go. And the Bulls are right there. Woodall, that's a three, too strong. Loose rebound picked up offensively by Pittsburgh and Woodall gets it back to Brown. Steps inside the arc and buries one. Brown showing that senior leadership that he possesses. Three-point edge for the Panthers. And there is the bench scoring. And part of it coming from that guy, Noriega. Also the play of Gilchrist, who has seven. Spin move, left hand too strong. Here comes Woodall. Panthers don't have numbers. Woodall will set up Brown and gets it back. Shoots the three. Rims off. Brown, the offensive rebound up to follow. Won't go. But he had a piece of it tipped out of bounds, and the Panthers will keep it. Robinson checks back in. It's Jared Famous checking back in for USF. And here comes the man you're looking for, Wanamaker. See if the Panthers can make a move in the second half of this second half. Leading by three, Woodall to the bench. Patterson with it. The offensive rebounds and edge to Pittsburgh. Of course, they lead the nation in rebound margin. Robinson sets up Patterson. Offensive foul. That is number one on Lamar Patterson. The Panthers will turn it over. Three-point game. The Bulls will get it back. The Panthers aren't happy with that call, but whenever you lower your shoulder, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of acting involved in, in him falling, but when you lower your shoulder, you give the ref an opportunity to make that call. And he did just that, I think. I didn't see anything wrong with that call, did you? No, not at all. Famous. 
against McGee. Oh, mano or mano, and McGee will pick up the foul. That's his first. You talk about some big bodies bumping, Curtis. Wow. Hey, I'm glad we're over here, man, because there's a lot of flesh being thrown around in there. Look at the strength of these guys. Number two on McGee. Famous is a good free throw shooter for a 6'11 player. Shoots 74%. One of four junior college transfers they have on the team. They've also got Anderson Jr., a transfer from Kansas State. And two at the line for Jared Famous. Gives him double figures at 10. Moore checks into the ball game. And it's a one-point game now. Patterson goes to the bench. Playing without Trayvon Woodall right now. He puts more pressure on McGee. He'll penetrate. Dish. Brown. Something deep in the corner. No good. Tipped up. No good. Still tipped up again. And finally, oh, that finish wouldn't go. And we've got a foul on USF. That'll be the first, I believe, on Jared Payton. Yes, his first. Panthers doing all they can, though, Curtis, on the offensive glass to get it back up. They just can't get it to fall. Yeah, it's almost like it's been a lid on the rim, second half for the Panthers. Robinson gets it back and has it blocked in a foul called on Famous. That looked like a pretty good block. A beautiful block. <laughs> All ball. It was not so on Famous. It was, it was on Fitzpatrick, not on Famous that time. Quickly he reacted to that play. Now he got him from behind. You can see the two of them yeah. squeezed together. Famous had the block, but the foul came on the body from behind, charged on Fitzpatrick. Panthers by one, and it stays that way. Robinson just a 55% foul shooter. And I think the scoring right now is we're in the second half of the second half is about what you'd expect, a low-scoring ball game. Yeah, and, you know, the Bulls are typically used to playing low-scoring games, so this is right in their comfort zone. The Panthers by two. And a loose ball. Touched last by Robertson. So the Panthers get a break there. And with a two-point lead. And 9-18 to go. Wanamaker will walk it up. Well, you know, John, before that play there, you, you talked about the fact that the turnovers have been killing this team. And they hadn't had any turnovers prior to that last one. In the second half. The Panthers give it right back to them. The crater will reset in half court with 24 on the shot clock. 8.52 to go in the game. We are deep in the second half now, and the Bulls are still very much in it. Shot clock inside 10. That's an offensive foul. That'll be number four, according to my numbers. Wow. That was a painful foul he just committed. Wow. That, that hurt me. <laughs> and he put him to the floor, didn't he? More than departs after a round of applause for taking the foul. And with four fouls, Augustus Gilchrist will go back to the bench. Well, the Panthers leading by two. They've got the basketball with eight and a half to play. Well, I really believe the difference in the second half has been the, the change of defense. McGee got the defender in the air, missed the shot. The Panther has really struggled against it. One, two, two, that slides back into a two, three zone. Anderson Jr. had that last rebound and a chance now for the Bulls to tie or maybe take the lead. Famous, off the glass, no good. He commits the foul. 
That will take us to a break with 7.50 to go. Right now, the Panthers, number four in the country, are hanging on against Stan Heath and USF. When you start with a strong foundation, when you rise to meet complex challenges, when you realize the potential impact, and when you bring new ideas to life, anything is possible. Hail to Pitt. Log on to PittsburghPanthers.com and visit men's and women's basketball game day centrals for complete basketball game day information. Basketball game day central is your home for ticket, parking, and traffic information, as well as broadcast details, post-game recaps, stats, and highlights. Your pre-game and post-game hub for Pitt basketball information is game day central at PittsburghPanthers.com. Located in the heart of Oakland overlooking the Cathedral of Learning, the University Club is the ideal location for your celebration. From elegant receptions to rehearsal dinners or bridal luncheons, the University Club offers a breathtaking venue and exceptional service for virtually any sized affair. Experience the masterful blend of historic elegance and modern amenities that make the University Club the classic Pittsburgh wedding location. Call 412-648-8213 or visit uc.pitt.edu for more information. The Peterson Sports Complex, future home of Pitt baseball, softball, and soccer, is scheduled to open in spring 2011. The complex, which is being built on 12 acres at the peak of Pitt's upper campus, will provide state-of-the-art homes for student-athletes. All three venues will feature synthetic grass and lighting for night contests. For more information and updates on the Peterson Sports Complex, visit PittsburghPanthers.com. This is the first of two meetings between these two Big East opponents this season. The Panthers are up by two. You can see looking to go 12 and one and open up a little bit of breathing room over Notre Dame trying to get a two game lead. USF looking for its third win in conference play and trying to pull off the same kind of shocker that they got hit with last year. There's more work to be done for both these teams and for the Panthers. If they can't handle the zone tonight they may be tested in the garden on Sunday I guarantee you. Yeah, they're going to be tested in a number of different ways against St. John's. I, I had an opportunity to watch that team play. And, uh, very explosive, like to run the basketball, and a number of guys that can put the ball in the basket. And, and you know, I talked about D.J. Kennedy, local kid, that always plays well against the Panthers. That's going to be a tough game for the Panthers in the Garden. Well, they've got round two against West Virginia. They've got that trip to Louisville coming up. So there is a lot of work to be done by Pittsburgh and everybody else in the conference. Uh, we are heading now right down the stretch and trying to position themselves for postseason play, not only in the Big East Championship, but also in the NCAA. There's no question, but they have to work ahead of them tonight, only shooting 23% in the second half. Noriega got the steal. Good defense by Woodall. Now the Panthers with three on one. McGee underneath and one. One of, the, one of the few transition buckets that the Panthers been able to get. Well, Noriega did a great ball, a great job to steal the ball. But he tried to reach out, keep it away from Woodall, and he missed the layup. <laughs> he did miss the layup and uh, got to go a little stronger than that. But as I mentioned, the Panthers got one of the few fast break opportunities, and McGee converted it and now converted the free throw to a three point play. The old fashioned way. Keep in mind that the University of South Florida Curtis had three different chances to tie this game and couldn't do it. Yeah, no better chance than that missed layup right there. That's right. And we have not been tied since it was 18-18 in the first half. Five-point lead, just over seven to play. That's the travel. Now this has got to be a nightmare for Stan Heath. Well, you, we talked about it, and, and this is the area that they struggled the most. They've been in every ga game, John, as you, you mentioned earlier, but at the end of the game, things like this start to take control of their team, and that's turning the basketball over. Well, they've turned it over four times in their last five possessions. Started off the second half really well controlling the basketball, but now gotten very careless with it. And doing a great job inside early in the second half. Wanamaker. <laughs> going to bring a timeout from Stan Heath. We'll take a 30 
30-second timeout. See if his Bulls can regroup. A 7-0 Pittsburgh run. here at the Peterson Event Center because the Panthers have opened it up to eight. And again, some mistakes, starting with a great steal by Noriega, but unfortunately for him, not a good finish. Well, you could talk about game changers. That could be a game changer there as well. He makes that shot, John. It's a tie for a game. He misses it all of a sudden. It's an eight-point game. McGee comes back on the other end off of the same missed layup on, uh, by, uh, by the Bulls and finishes strong for three-point play. Panthers by eight, six and a half to go. Shot clock at five. Poland penetrates. Anderson Jr. with a miss, and McGee has the rebound. Now Wanamaker looked inside, decided to keep it, goes to Woodall, weaves his way into the lane, and then brings it back out. We're heading to six minutes left. Robinson with eight. Panthers, just like that, are back up by ten. Famous got inside against McGee, and McGee's going to pick up the foul. That is three on him. In the second half, 17 fouls against USF, five against Pittsburgh. Bulls will bring you back in a couple of big men as Gilchrist returns. Also, Taylor will come back in to replace McGee, who has three fouls. They'll bring it all the way out to Fitzpatrick. I want to get to do some ice over there. <laughs> Gilchrist way outside. Quick turn and shoot from the outside. Comes up short. Wanamaker has the rebound after Poland with a miss. Poland has not scored in this game. And no surprise, he's starting to call Wanamaker's name quite a bit, not just on the offensive end, but as you saw, a nice defensive rebound there. And it's been over six minutes now since the Bulls have scored. That's allowed the Panthers to retake control of the game. Brown gets inside, feeds Taylor. He lost it. USF, Crater marches up, Robertson, the dump down inside and the finish, nicely done, I tell you what, Gilchrist has played well. Yeah, and Robertson's doing a good job of distributing the basketball after bursting out to a few buckets of his own, but, you know, you have to be happy if you're the Bulls, at least the fact that you're in this game, you're executing your offense, you're just playing against a very good number four team in the country. Wanamaker baseline, bending, bending off from the rebound on the weak side, brought out of there by Robertson. Now I give Crater some credit, too, in the second half. He's done a good job of running their offense. Yeah, he has. He's gotten them in their sets, and they've really gotten the shots they wanted. Not all of them have fallen, fallen but uh, I think, you know, I agree. He's getting them in their, in their sets, and they're running the thing quite well on the offensive end. Panthers are just starting to pick it up defensively. Brown gets it back from Robinson, who goes to the left hand. Ten now for Nasir Robinson. He's so effective, so dangerous when he catches that ball in the middle. Do so many things with it, John. Back to a ten-point Panther lead. Wanamaker a steal against Poland, takes it up, leaves it for Taylor. So now the Panthers are up by 12. Their biggest lead of the night was 13 during the first half. But again, I think uh, some mistakes have really hurt USF. You know, and when you make mistakes against the Panthers, they usually make you pay. And we talked about calling Wanamaker's name. Somehow, at the end of the game, when it counts the most, he's always involved in the action. He 
he did try to shoot that ball, I think, but he wound up just leaving it for Taylor. Yeah. And Taylor finishes up the easy deuce. Panthers are up by a dozen. Jamie Dixon working in his huddle. 3.48 to go. And it wasn't like USF, Curtis, didn't have opportunities because they did. Well, that, that, that was one of the things that really you know, bothers the coaches the most when they go to the film room and they start to break down tapes. And they look at the opportunities that they blew, and there were several today, as you mentioned, John. USF did pull off this upset at home last year against the Panthers. They had back-to-back -back wins against ranked teams and finished 9-9 nine and nine in the conference. Gilchrist rattles in and then out into the hands of McGee. Look for the Panthers to go into what's called their spread flex offense and work the clock a little bit. Woodall is back on along with Brown, McGee, Robinson and Wanamaker. Noriega, Crater out there with Fitzpatrick, Gilchrist, and also Burwell right now. That's a three from the corner. Comes up short. McGee had it, lost it, and it was saved that time by Robinson. Nice play by Monsieur Robinson to give Pitt another possession with three minutes to go. But the Bulls are starting to come out of that 2 3 zone. Almost have to. They're in the man to man now, John. Brown with nine, Monsieur Robinson with ten. Want to make her eleven again? The balance of the pit offense, but a low-scoring game. Shot clock at five. Brown gets it back. Robinson with a dozen. Excellent ball movement by the Panthers. Was determined to get the shot that they wanted. Panthers' biggest lead of the night. Gilchrist works his way inside and draws the foul. <laughs> well, Robinson snuck in there and got a foul, but it's been fun to watch these two guys go at it. That's the third on him, and the Panthers' lead is 60 to 46. They're on a 15 to 2 run. Thank you. Because of you, many of us have received scholarships. Because of you, I have a scholarship and I plan on studying medicine. Thank you. Because of you, we have the latest in classroom technology. Because of you, I have a great place to work out. Thank you. Because of you, I received the chair to strengthen the study of the new Europe. Thank you. Because of you, we're able to perform groundbreaking work on ALS, Alzheimer's, Huntington's, and Parkinson's disease. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because of you, because of you we, have scholarships. we have scholarships from pet clubs across the country. Thank you. Because of you, our campus is expanding. Because of you, I received a scholarship that has enabled me to continue working while earning my degree. Because of you, we established the Simmons Center, a leading center in research and treatment of pulmonary fibrosis. Thank you. Because of you, I received a scholarship to study business. Thank you. Because of you, I received a scholarship to study secondary English education. Because of you, the School of Law is taking giant steps in training tomorrow's lawyers. Thank you. Because of you, I have a scholarship to study psychology, and I get to study in this beautiful library. Because of you, I received a scholarship to study political science. Thank you. Located in the heart of Oakland, overlooking the Cathedral of Learning and minutes from downtown, restaurants and shopping, the University Club is the ideal location for your next meeting or conference. This newly renovated state-of-the-art conference facility advances productivity while providing sophisticated ambiance. Experience the masterful blend of historic elegance and modern amenities that make the University Club the ideal Pittsburgh conference location. Call 412-648-8213 or visit uc.pet.edu for more information. With 9.56 to play, the Panthers had a one-point lead. And right now, with 2.06 to go, they are up by 14. And in the second half, you can credit that surge to Nasir Robinson. He's 
been the energy guy for this for the Panthers the second half. Didn't spend too much time on the hardwood because of fouls. But uh, he's getting quality minutes and just quality play out of him right now. Panthers trying to go to a school best, 12 and 1 in the Big East Conference and hold off the Bulls of the University of South Florida. And again, the Bulls are right there, Curtis. We talked about it. They had the stretches. And they turned the ball over four times in five possessions, missed a layup, which would have tied the ball game. So they had their chance. Yeah, they certainly did. And you know, I spoke with the coaching staff uh, prior to the game, and one of the things that they pointed out was that we have a bunch of young guys, inexperienced guys, I should say, not necessarily young. Not many of these guys played in the Big East in terms of quality minutes from a year ago. Some young guys on a team that's getting quality minutes now, but you get that mixed together, you don't have guys out there that have very much experience on the floor playing in the Big East. One out of two at the line. McGee hangs on to the rebound, tries to step through the trap, and will march to the other end. Foul goes on Fitzpatrick. That's his third foul, and it'll put McGee, not a good foul shooter at the line. He shoots under 50%. You need to work with him on the foul. <laughs> well, say, the way that Jamie Dixon works with him, obviously they work with him, and I'm kidding when I say this, but they work with him in practice quite a bit, and he's just struggling from the free throw line. But right now, the way they're working with him, they're playing him offense, defense, with two minutes, two minutes and four seconds to go in the ball game. Look for him to go out on the deep, I mean, the offensive end, so they don't foul him, but defensively they'll put him back in. Not a good effort on that free throw, but the Panthers catch a break, and with 2.03 to play, they'll get it back. Balance, Robinson a dozen, Zana 11, they all came in the first half, Wanamaker with 11, Robinson with 10 of his 12 points here in the second half. And you see the difference in second half points, and that's something that everybody worries about when they play against Pittsburgh because they do such a good job at the offensive rebounding end. You're right, and they get just better as the game goes on in terms of execution, in terms of rebounding, as you just pointed out. And, and uh, you got to play for 40 minutes against this team. Foul, it'll go on famous. Jared will pick up the personal. That's his third. And Gilchrist and Noriega will check back in for the Bulls, who again have played hard. They were right there with eight minutes to go in the game, and then it slipped away from them. One of those games you make for a long trip home because you think about all the things that you could have did to maybe change the complexity of the game or give your team a better opportunity to win. Wanamaker is four of four in the foul line. All came in the first half trying to stretch that Panther lead and will. And a few times you see Jamie Dixon sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> True. He's, trust me, he'll be back up. I know it's a minute and 39 seconds ago, but he'll be back up. Brad hits there a pair is. at the line and they stretch the lead out. 62-47. Woodall comes up with the turnover. Probably doesn't make much difference tonight, but here's another time in the game where Ashton Gibbs is so crucial. One of the best free throw shooters in the country. Obviously, they'll look to foul. And Stan Heath saying, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Finally, Anderson does give the foul. Big East standings now. If this one stands, the Panthers will add to their lead. They will go to 12 and 1. The University of South Florida will slip to 2 and 12. That's after they won 9 last year, but missing some key parts to their puzzle because of the fact that Dominic Jones is gone. Chris Howard, Mike Mercer also departed this team. Yeah, I think that 37 points he had a year ago against the Panthers I might have helped a little bit. It might have. Well, he was capable of lighting up the opposition. Came out and was a number one pick. One of two at the line for Robinson. And Crater sets up his teammate for a step and a timeout. And the Bulls will take the timeout. But I think, Curtis, if somebody had told you right 
as you start the second half of the big east regular season you're going to lose your leading score and still go on and win three straight games that's something to be said for that it, it certainly is and the way that they won i mean didn't shoot particularly well west virginia grinded it out was able to come away with the win against villanova played their style of basketball went into a very tough arena and won there and of course you know today here uh, one of the best teams in the country at protecting their home court and they did just that today they've lost only once on this court this season and they have more work to be done including as we've talked about off and on tonight that trip to the garden west virginia round two between those two rivals then they'll play at louisville they've got a game at south florida and they finish against villanova well, this place is going to be rocking against villanova but it's not very easy to play a louisville either no the cardinals have played very well at home well the panthers still have some work to be done as we said going in the bracketologist saying that they are one of the teams in the country that will be a number one pick in the NCAA tournament. Also predicting the Big East will have 11 teams in the tournament. That's a lot. If uh, J.J. Moore could have hit a slash and Brown, we would have saw something special at the rim. Wanamaker keeps his dribble alive, gets it back to Brown. And the reach-in foul is taken and given, rather, by Burwell. 63-49 with 38.5 to play as Noriega and Gilchrist will check back in for offense for Stan Heath. And Heath realistic. He said, you know, I, this is not the same team I had last year. But they've got some people coming in. A couple of big kids. Andre Jackson, 6'10". Jordan Amabain at 7'3". Jordan Heath, the coach's son, is redshirting this year because of injuries. And Victor Rudd, a transfer from Arizona State, and they really like him. He's also sitting out this season. Well, the Bulls certainly got the right guy, Heath, at the helm. Uh, great, great, great experience under his belt. You know, obviously coached in Arkansas, did a good job uh, wherever he's gone and coached in uh, his 10th year and done, doing a pretty good job here. Just has a tough, tough way to go with the not so talented team right now. But Good to hear some things from him in the future. What a great shot by Burwell from deep in that corner. 22.3 to play. And we'll march to the other end. Yeah, that was a tough shot falling away. In the double bonus now. So Brown, who has nine, trying to join a trio at double figures, and will do so. Brown has had a pretty solid ball game tonight. Did some big threes early on when the Panthers were struggling. And he gets a pair at the line. Good foul shooter at 78%. He's got 11. Robinson, 13. McGee, 9. Wanamaker, 13. And Zana, 11. And at the other end. And Stan Heath is waving off the defense. It was maybe at times tougher than the Panthers expected tonight, Curtis, but they do get the win by 12. 67-55 is the final score. Your thoughts? Well, you know, again, the Panthers handled their business. It wasn't pretty as I think you mentioned, but uh, again, a win is a win. And uh, you know, I, I think the Panthers are certainly on their way of proving that they deserve to be the number four team in the country. So for Curtis Aiken and our entire ESPN3.com crew, I'm John Sanders. We say so long from the Peterson Center in Pittsburgh. Final score, the Panthers 65, the Bulls 50, 67, the Bulls 55. For an archived copy of the entire game, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to ESPN3.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. In Pittsburgh on Wednesday night, another win for the number four ranked team in the country. They're 147th at home against 12 defeats. 12 point was the final difference, but it was maybe closer than it looked at times. I'm John Sanders along with Curtis Aiken.
Uh, about midway through the second half, it was a one-point game, and then the Panthers went on a 15-2 to two run. Yeah, and I thought, you know, it came out very sluggish the first, uh, the second half, the first part of the second half, I should say, but uh, I agree. They went on a run, and it's large part due to the fact that they started extending their defense, and they figured out on the other end what the Bulls were doing defensively because they really had them off balance. In the first half, the Panthers opened up a 13-point lead. Thanks to their bench, and another different guy stepped up. It was Philippe Zana tonight. Well, you never know who's going to step up, but, you know, they certainly have the personnel for a number of guys to do just that. As you see, Zana finishing at the rim with two hands, and, you know, he's just very active all over the place tonight. And the guy that he replaced because he only had, because he had two fouls, was Robinson. Robinson found his way the second half, got in the ball game, got some quality minutes, and finished, as you see there, over the, over the right shoulder with the left hand. Just so effective when he gets the basketball in the middle. Just very creative, as you saw there, John. Well, he had the double-double in, in the game, and he scored 11 of those 13 points in the second half in his play. Certainly one of the reasons that the Panthers were able to pull out a 12-point win over the Bulls of USF. They've got St. John's on Saturday in the Garden. West Virginia a rematch here in Pittsburgh. They'll play at Louisville. They've got game number two against USF coming up on March 2nd down in Tampa. And they will finish in what should be a Barner burner right here in Pittsburgh on March 5 against Villanova. So there's more to be done for the Panthers. They are still ranked number four. They win again 12 and one in conference play. 67-55 is the final for Curtis Aiken. I'm John Sanders. Good night from Pittsburgh. Well, uh, uh, very excited about the win and uh, how we did it. We're rebounding wise. We really emphasized it this week going into this game, actually last couple of days. And uh, we had got out rebounded by Villanova and uh, um, really wanted to get a change against a good rebounding team in South Florida. So to out rebound by 22 speaks volumes. I, I was really happy how we uh, uh, got after it. Came with a lot of loose balls. Uh, Trayvon Woodall first half getting on the floor, getting after a couple of uh, those were key. And, and uh, uh, liked how we did it and uh, finished strong and executed well against the zone as the game went on. But uh, uh, real happy with the win against a team that played well. I thought South Florida played well, made some shots, uh, mid-range jump shots from the big guys and made some threes. Uh, so uh, against a team that played well, made shots, uh, we found a way to win it with our rebounding and, and uh, the defense in the second half. Um, you know, I mean, we, we I, I don't know what the exact numbers were. I think it was, I thought it was uh, five, four or five at halftime, but uh, ended up 22. Um, you know, I think we missed a lot of tip-ins. I think that was probably a part of it. I mean, we, we seemed to have about three, four times where we got two, three uh, attempts at the rim and maybe came away with nothing. So, uh, you know, it didn't, didn't get what we want, but the effort was there. You keep going, you keep battling. And uh, I think, you know, they played zone, and that's how you beat the zone a lot, off offensive rebounding. We emphasize that a lot, so that's a big part of it. Um, but uh, uh, I think that was key. And then I thought we took the, made them take a lot of jump shots, and they made some, and they shot, uh, made some tough shots. So, you know, I, I, at times our defense uh, wasn't, um, you know, we were, we were giving up baskets, but I thought it was because uh, they made some tough shots. I mean, it's sick of this, I think of the six threes they hit, four of them were pretty well guarded. Uh, the two at the end, the one the end and a half. Um, so, you know, we made them take jump shots. Their big guys were taking jump shots for the most part. And so those will uh, limit you, I think, on offensive rebounding. Shane, with about six minutes to go, you guys were able to work the ball into Manny Pittman Jr. He did a nice job mm -hmm. of the Were you pleased with the way you guys were able to? Yeah, I mean, it took us, it took us a little bit, but uh, we got to it, and we just kind of finished some things a little bit better, maybe a little bit more patient. Thought maybe we attacked it maybe on the second time through the reversal and rather than the first time on the first uh, interior touch that we got. And maybe that gave us a little bit more spacing, a little bit more room to finish, uh, and, and put us a little bit more advantage. So maybe a little bit more patience against the zone helped us as we got going uh, against it. And I thought that was key. But we attacked it well. Um, we did a good job. Um, and uh, to their credit, they made shots. I mean, they shot 47% against the team that just you know held two uh, very good teams on the road to below 30. So. Uh, give them some uh, very uh, give them credit for uh, the shots they made and how they played. And uh, again, I'm very happy with the 
uh, how we responded on the on the glass. So um, did some really good things. So you, can you talk about uh, this is a series of defensive plays that Jay Day came up with that steal. Mm -hmm. Then you threw the charge, and then Trey Long came up with the block. Three consecutive plays. How much did that spark the run? Well, it was good. I mean, uh, I, you know, JJ is, uh, uh, you know, we were really trying to get him to, uh, Jonathan, sure, again, uh, help us on the defensive end, and he came up with some some big plays, and he keeps getting better, as do all our freshmen. Khalib Zano is very good uh, today, as, as uh, you know, you see freshmen get better in, 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 in throughout the year, and that was, uh, you know, that's a big part of it. But uh, those were two big plays, got, got, got the guys going and got us, uh, uh, got us possession, and uh, that's what we needed uh, against a team that was making shots, uh, uh, making some tough shots. You've thrown four three-pointers in three games without asking, and that seems mm -hmm. to be the game for him. Mm -hmm. uh, you still win the court. What's mm -hmm. kind of the difference? Uh, well, I mean, he, he's a good shooter, and uh, you know, he, that's you know, we're not going to all of a sudden come up with this. There's no free agent or no uh, waiver wire that we can pick up a guy. I mean, that's what he does. So, uh, you know, I mean, like I said, we 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 wanted to, no, nobody had to change how they played. We just had to uh, do what we do and do it do it right. And uh, um, you know, you're not going to all of a sudden you know uh, create a guy that's going to shoot uh, Ashton's percentage or shoot uh, Ashton's attempts. And and I think that was something that we uh, made very clear from the beginning. Whereas. I think everybody else wanted to talk about stepping up and replace it. We didn't have to replace it. We just had to play our way. And so uh, I think that speaks to exactly what we talked about three games ago when Ashton went down. And so um, I think that's a good sign. I think that's a good sign. And uh, uh, our guys understood that and uh, did a good job. It wasn't like we took more. We probably took less. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, we don't miss a, uh, we don't have a, a lot of missed threes. Uh, or just because we want to say uh, we got to take more threes to yeah, make up for them. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, we'll see. I mean, we'll see how it goes. I mean, uh, um, we'll see what the doctors say and what the trainers say, obviously, and, uh, you know, nothing changes on that. So they'll uh, they'll make the decision, and we'll see how he's doing. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we, we could have played. I thought we missed some. I, uh, there was a stretch where we kept missing putbacks, and and uh, they made some shots. And you know, I mean, you know, it's it's, you know, I mean, it, they're 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 good, and and uh, I think they responded. They, didn't, they they probably felt they didn't play well in their last game and responded. They've had a lot of close games. The last one not being the case, and so they came out and and played well. Their size, uh, 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 they're able to score in the post or mid post, as we talked about. And uh, and really relied on a lot of jump shots. I thought eventually that would get to them. I felt they took some shots and they made that we defended well. And I think that goes back to what we talk about all the time of you know defending. And guys, are, we're, we're playing against high-level players here, and they're going to make some shots. But as long as you make them take tough shots constantly and con and, and throughout the game, eventually it works to our favor. And that's uh, always been our mentality. I mean, you know, both teams are out there trying to do their best, and they're talented and and uh, uh, and have very good players. Well, I mean, uh, I think position, you know, you don't want to be out of position. There's a big difference about being, you know, in front of them and, and being behind them or trailing the play and, uh, and and not having the angle. So, I mean, I think you want to be in position. And I, I thought that was the best thing. I, I can only think of really uh, two baskets uh, that we really gave them the uh, position right around the rim and where they were able to get layups and uh, really uh, poor defense. But most of the time they were, they were fall away jump shots or, or uh, facing jump shots by their bigs. Or the the threes, this this you know they hit six threes and, and and I you know about four of them that I can think of were pretty well guarded. You know the two at the end of the game when we had the the pretty good lead and then the the, the one obviously at the end of the half, uh, you know were, were were pretty well guarded. So, um, you know we, we, we defended we defended uh, well though uh, good, uh, but the numbers don't indicate it uh, probably as much as uh, uh, as it should. Yeah, I thought Trayvon played really well. I thought the two plays where he got on the floor in the first half were key. I think that set the tone for the rebounding uh, as well as the, as the numbers really changed in the second half. But 40-18 uh, speaks to effort, speaks to energy and, and uh, execution as well. Uh, you know, you don't rebound unless you do a lot of things well. And, and uh, offensive execution, making them take jump shots, being in position, uh, allows you to limit them to three offensive rebounds. But I thought Trayvon uh, did a real good job. You know, he didn't shoot it great. He was 0 for 4 from 3. But it just show, goes to show that you can play really well without making some jump shots. And I thought he played a very, very good game, good to solid defensively. Uh, got guys five assists, got other guys shots, and uh, really took uh, – 
uh, took care of the ball. But I thought he played well, real well, well around the game. Uh, you know, I think he's just, you know, he's a junior. He's uh, improving and getting better and, you know, just playing with more confidence and, and uh, uh, finding his spots and, you know, just playing in uh, uh, maybe a little more patient. And I think that's kind of what he used in the second half where he was a little bit more patient. And, uh, you know, you look like you're jumping better when you're playing uh, against uh, one instead of playing in a crowd. And that's what we talk about in the zone. You don't want to play around in a crowd or against a uh, man. Um, you know, playing in crowds. So, you know, everybody looks more athletic when they're on their own and by themselves rather than playing against two. And, and so, um, you know, he's, he's uh, you know, his, his body's changed over his career, and that's that's a good thing, too. He's, uh, he's improved in a lot of areas, and, uh, you know, I think that's one of them. Any final for Coach? Okay. Coach, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tune in to the hour-long Jamie Dixon Show presented by the University Club, driven by number one Cochrane on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Watch a live broadcast or re-airs on Sunday brought to you by Pitt Panthers Television on the Comcast Network. Fans can also listen live on 93.7 FM, The Fan, or Panthers All Access at PittsburghPanthers.com. For a full schedule of the Jamie Dixon Show and more broadcast details, visit Panthers on the Air at PittsburghPanthers.com. Hi, I'm Agnes Baronato, head coach of the Panthers. And I'm Shayla Scott. And on behalf of the entire Pitt basketball team, we'd like to invite you to our annual Pink to Peterson game on Saturday, February 19th, when we play West Virginia. One dollar from every ticket sold goes to the Pittsburgh affiliate of Susan G. Komen for the Cure. And you can save five dollars on your Race for the Cure registration if you sign up at the game. Together, on Saturday, February 19th, we can make a difference. When you start with a strong foundation, when you rise to meet complex challenges, when you realize the potential impact, and when you bring new ideas to life, anything is possible. Hail to Pitt. Log on to PittsburghPanthers.com and visit men's and women's basketball game day centrals for complete basketball game day information. Basketball game day central is your home for ticket, parking, and traffic information, as well as broadcast details, post-game recaps, stats, and highlights. Your pre-game and post-game hub for Pitt basketball information is game day central at PittsburghPanthers.com. Tune in to the hour-long Jamie Dixon Show presented by the University Club, driven by number one Cochrane on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Watch a live broadcast or re-airs on Sunday brought to you by Pitt Panthers Television on the Comcast Network. Fans can also listen live on 93.7 FM, The Fan, or Panthers All Access at PittsburghPanthers.com. For a full schedule of the Jamie Dixon Show and more broadcast details, visit Panthers on the Air at PittsburghPanthers.com. <laughs>
The Peterson Sports Complex, future home of Pitt baseball, softball, and soccer, is scheduled to open in spring 2011. The complex, which is being built on 12 acres at the peak of Pitt's upper campus, will provide state-of-the-art homes for student-athletes. All three venues will feature synthetic grass and lighting for night contests. For more information and updates on the Peterson Sports Complex, visit PittsburghPanthers.com. PittsburghPanthers.com and visit men's and women's basketball game day centrals for complete basketball game day information. Basketball game day central is your home for ticket, parking, and traffic information, as well as broadcast details, post game recaps, stats, and highlights. Your pre game and post game hub for pit basketball information is game day central. 